final part of the redox equilibria is the electrochemical cells. So, cells are commonly used as electrical power sources. There are three types, and these are primary cells, secondary cells, and fuel cells. A primary cell, well, its reaction is irreversible. That means that it's not designed to be recharged. A common type of this is a dry alkaline battery, and these are often found in small appliances such as TV remotes and torches. Next we have a secondary cell. The reaction of this is reversible, and that means it's designed specifically to be recharged. To recharge it then, a current is passed through the cell, which then forces the electrons to flow in a reverse reaction, thus in effect refilling the battery. Rechargeable cells are used quite often, and these are in mobile phones, laptops, drills, etc. Now we have fuel cells. These are different because unlike normal electrochemical cells, which store their chemicals within the battery, a fuel cell gets its chemicals fed into it. And what this basically means is the chemicals come from an external source. There's one particular type of fuel cell we need to know about, and this is the hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell, and this is used in electric vehicles. So the hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell, well, we need to know about its electrodes, and these are platinum porous electrodes. The reason we use platinum, we should already know this, but it's because it's inert, so it won't react with the substances. And what porous means is the tiny holes and these allow for the chemicals to pass through. The electrolyte is potassium hydroxide, and what this does is the same job as a salt bridge, and it basically just allows the flow of ions to pass through it, thus completing the circuit. The reducing agent of this is the hydrogen, and we should already know that the reducing agent goes on the left of the cell. And we can also see the diagram of basically what I've just described here. And as we can see, the hydrogen comes here and it's on the left. The oxygen is here, goes on the right. Here is the electrolyte, which is the potassium hydroxide. We have our two electrodes here and here. And water, which is our only product, in addition to heat, comes out from here. Okay, so now what we need to know is about the conditions. So the optimum operating condition for a fuel cell is a high temperature and a high pressure. The reason for this is because at standard conditions, the reaction is just simply too slow to produce a good enough EMF, a good enough voltage, a good enough power. Therefore, we increase the temperature because this increases the kinetic energy which makes the reaction happen quicker. However, from what we learnt before, the Chatelier's principle then applies and the equilibrium will shift to the left which actually decreases the EMF. What we then do to counter this is we increase the pressure because then that kind of balances all the effects and we have a higher EMF but we also have a viable reaction time. So finally, what we need to know is what type of conditions in terms of pH the reaction can occur in and the answer is it can occur in alkaline conditions and acidic conditions so it can do both and we need to know the equations for this or at least I think we do and they are here and I can't really help you learn that but all I can say is if it asks you one and says what happens if you do it in an acidic conditions the overall equation is the same. So what that means is the EMF in acidic conditions is equal to the EMF in alkaline conditions. So this equals that. And then that is it for the electrochemical cells of the redox equilibria.